Let's talk about Tolly, which is uh, written by uh, Diablo Cody, who, of course, you know, great screenwriter, wrote Juno, in which she took this kind of bracingly acerbic look at unplanned teen pregnancy. In Tolly, she returns to the subject of maternity and motherhood, this time from the perspective of a middle-aged mother struggling to juggle the demands of life with two school-aged kids and a newborn baby. So she is Marlowe. She is convincingly rattled as uh, Marlowe. I mean, she does. It's 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 a really sort of brilliant performance of exhaustion, you know, and tiredness, and you know, nothing but feeding and school runs, doing all that sort of stuff. And her whole life is starting to fall apart. Her brother says ominously, or maybe her husband says, "I, you know, I don't, I don't want to repeat of what happened last time." So there is the implication that you know, the last time she went through this kind of thing, things didn't go so well. And then her. Smugly successful brother says to her, look, let me arrange a night nanny for you. She says, what's a night nanny? She says, a nanny that comes at night. She says, what's the point of that? She says, because you actually get some sleep. You know, that's the whole point. Now, an idea that the movie imagines that, that the audience haven't heard of. I certainly hadn't heard of it before the, before the movie brings it up. Is it something that you're familiar with? I've never heard it called night nanny. No, no, I've never heard it called that. For anyway, I'm aware so that there, are, you know, you can you can yeah. find people who will help you out at all times. Yes, but that's referring to anyway. So she doesn't want to do it, but then finally she succumbs. Uh, enter Tolly, um, played by Mackenzie Davis, who is this free spirited bundle of energy, who eerily reminds Marlowe of the kind of youthful exuberance that she once had, you know, before motherhood took control of her life, and it helps her to reconnect with the parts of her life that she believed that she had lost. And together, they form this really sort of important bond, as if, you know, as if what's going on is that they are, they're sort of discovering each other for the first time. Here we go. You seem like a great mom. Great moms organize class parties and casino night. They bake cupcakes that look like minions. All the things I'm just too tired to do. Honestly, even getting dressed just feels exhausting. I open my closet and I just think, didn't I just do this? Yeah, but that's the downside of living on a planet with a short solar day. Although Jupiter's even shorter. You're like a book of fun facts for unpopular fourth graders. <laughs> Don't you think that's funny? Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'm I'm getting there, but you know, I'd like I would watch Charlie's Throne in anything. Okay, so this is basically Cody reuniting with uh, Jason Reitman, for whom she penned the earlier Throne vehicle, uh, Young Adult, and the one thing that you get to to start with is it's a very in- engagingly honest and surprisingly entertaining portrait of sort of postnatal exhaustion uh, and depression and exasperation, as you'd expect from Diablo Cody. There's some very very sort of uh, sharp dialogue. There's um, their, their, they have a, their, their son is atypical and um, they keep being told by everybody that he's quirky. And at one point she gets really, she says, what, it's a, a, a child or a ukulele? Why does everybody keep saying quirky? And there's actually a really brilliant scene when she's talking to the headmistress who's basically saying, you know, you, you're going to have to find another school. And she gets really, really angry. And the headmistress says, I don't want you to leave like this. And she says, I leave like this every day. It's just that you don't see it. And there's a real sort of, you know, bite to all this. This is going on all the time, managing all this stuff all the time, but nobody else sees it. And then when the Night Nanny is suggested, of course, it's being a Diablo Cody script, there's a lot of sort of silly literate stuff about Night Nanny. Well, I can see how that's going to work. You know, it's one of those things that it's going to turn out that she's, you know, really scary and evil and I'll end up walking with a stick and everybody else will get killed. And if you've seen things like The Guardian and, you know, you know that sort of horror movie trope about that. And then when Tolly does arrive, there is a little bit of an air of scary Mary Poppins about her shit that she is, you know, full of energy and sort of beaming in in a way that's almost crazy, but not quite, and yet proves to be enormously supportive. And I think there is real tragicomic punch to the predicament. The thing that you have to remember is that if you're familiar with Diablo Cody's work, if you think, for example, she worked in the horror fantasy genre, she made, you know, she wrote Jennifer's Body, which I think is very underrated, you can sort of see where the narrative is going before it starts to reveal some of its secrets. I mean, our, our, our central character, played by Charlize Theron, is constantly sort of falling asleep and having these dreams of drowning and dreams of mermaids. And, you know, she's kind of oppressed by this this sense of sort of losing herself uh, in water. And there is a certain point in the narrative when I know that what happened was some members of the audience went, oh, hang on, I wasn't expecting that to, um, that to be the way it was. But I think actually the film is more coherent than you expect. And it's important to look at it as a Diablo Cody script and understand where Diablo Cody comes from, the way in which she will you know, play with, with, with the form of what you expect. But 
even if some of the narrative changes don't completely work for you, I think there's enough of the film which has its feet firmly on terra firma, on the ground, to sort of keep everything together. There is a brilliant use of Cindy Lauper, which is something which I'm very, very fond of. But the, you know, the, the most impressive thing is that that portrayal of somebody who is at the at their wits' end, somebody who has, you know, is being pulled apart by being required to be all these different things to all these different people. And what it, what the film is very good at doing is evoking the the drudgery of just day to day having to keep that together and then you know where that takes your your you know your mind in terms of where you where your thoughts wander off to when you're faced with that kind of environment so an interesting film i mean not without some problems and it's not going to work for everybody but i thought it was adventurous and that central performance by charlie's theron is it's theron isn't it theron as in oh, we, we did, we did this, this uh, yeah, but neither of us Thron. Have, Th- sh- sh- that's right, Thron. Charlie's Thron. Thron, I think. Thron. Yes, I beg your pardon. You're so right. Like our, Tron. Our memory is so terrible collectively. You speak for yourself. <laughs>